This is project 30 of Hacking with Swift. We're going to look at instruments, the built-in Xcode tool to help you find and fix performance problems. For more information, see the website hackingwithswift.com where you can buy this video and all the videos in this series in high resolution or download them as eBooks. You can also find me on Twitter. I am at two straws. If you have questions, complaints, suggestions, whatever, follow me there, get in touch. I would love to hear from you. Now, before we start, this is very important. Instruments is a very, very powerful tool that can give you detailed insight about your app's performance, what's taking up most of the time when it's running to help you spot and fix problems. But to get a really good fix on what's wrong, you should use an actual device. I have an iPhone plugged in right now recording with this video that will use an actual device inside instruments to give you real world performance. Remember, your Mac, this amazing Yosemite desktop, is running in my case on a Retina MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM and yada yada yada. It's extremely powerful compared to any iPhone or any iPad. Uh, as a result, the simulator does not give a very accurate performance profile. It doesn't work like a real device. It works like your Mac does, so much, much faster. When you're profiling, please use a real device. It makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, go ahead and download the project code for this project from the website, hackingwithswift.com. And this time it actually is project code. It's the full thing. I've written a full project for you. I'm gonna open it now in Xcode. And I'll play it back on my device. You can see how awesome this project is not. So I'll press play. It's thinking. It's running it. There we go. So it's a selection of pictures of uh, Greek mythology from an, a mythology app I made. You're welcome to go and buy it. Uh, and you basically just swipe through the pictures and find one you like and then tap on it. And it'll zoom in to the detail view controller with the picture, which kind of has a sort of lameish animation attached to it. And that's it. I can tap on the picture and uh, behind the scenes add one adds one to a counter. So if I go back, it'll say uh, if I go to the landscape perhaps, you'll see it says 13 there. It's tapped on 13 times. It's a very bad layout. This is a terrible, terrible app on many fronts. I'll open up Icarus. There he is. Tap, 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 tap. Go back. Uh, find another one. Uh, here's Odysseus. Uh, tap, 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 tap. Great. So I'm, I'm just using the app as I normally would. This is what we have right now. Uh, and it's not a brilliant app. In fact, I'd, I'd call it a pretty lame app, actually. <laughs> um, yes, it doesn't do very much, but the actual code behind it is appalling. This is a design to be bad. You see it's starting to slow down there, doing the transitions between view controllers? Yeah, this is just a bad, bad app. There's Orpheus. Oh, no. Uh, Xcode saying lost connection to Jules. What's going on? The app just crashed. It just it just gave up. And if you look in the the bottom of Xcode here, you'll see that entire time I was using the app, it says received memory warning, received memory warning, received memory warning. This is a bad application. Not only because the layout's terrible. I don't really care about the layout here, but the code is bad. It is not performing very well, even though it's not doing very much. Uh, and it really is not doing very much. If you look at this, is our entire project here on the left, uh, there's selection view controller, image view controller, and that's it. There's no main.storyboard to do layout. It's all done in code. Uh, it's just a table view to begin with. Uh, you know, it loads up the JPEGs, just like we did in our project one. Uh, it does a bit of work down here to show it in here, show the pictures. Uh, it uses a little uh, CA layer magic to do shadows. Uh, it, it, ta it draws the number of taps next to it. Uh, and then it brings in the detail view. I mean, that's hardly any code when you think about it. And over here in image view controller, uh, it creates the image view in code, uh, does a bit of auto layout stuff, and then complicated, does a little animation timer to make that, that strange animation effect that's going on, uh, and then draws it in. So it's not, not doing a lot of work, and yet this application is fundamentally broken in many, many places, and it's actually crashing. This is an iPhone 6 is running on, and it just doesn't work very well. So what we're going to do is see what Instruments can tell us about this project with a few simple checks. Instruments is a profiler, which means it will add some checking code to your own code to track things that are happening, how many objects you're creating and destroying, how many methods are called and how often and how much time is spent in those methods and so forth. So it does add some overhead to your actual performance code, 
but it does mean you can get very, very detailed insight into what your program is up to. So with your uh, device still selected, go to product and choose profile or press command I. This will build it with profiling code added and then launch instruments, a separate tool, a separate and very powerful tool. And these are the instruments it can work with. These are the various ways it can look at your code and see what it's doing. And we'll start with an easy one, which is Time Profiler. Press that, select Choose, then press this Record button, the red circle. This will launch the app on my device, as you can see, uh, and it will start monitoring what it's doing. So up here, this graph that's drawing is showing real-time CPU performance. So the higher that, that number is, the more CPU is being used. I'll choose uh, Icarus, little spike there. I'll choose uh, Midas, another big spike. I'll go back and, and choose uh, what about Heracles here, or Hercules, depending on whether you're for Latin or Greek. Uh, so you can see there's things happening here, and um, it's showing us a real performance as it happens. I'll press stop to kill the app, and we can look at what the data actually means. So we have, to begin with, this large spike, which is the application launch time then uh, a lot of small spikes along the way perpetuated by uh, these uh, are perpetuated punctuated by these three spikes when i went to see a picture each time by default down here it's telling you what every thread was doing as you can see it's 95 percent on the main thread there's very very little actual multi-threading code happening here it's all in one thread and on the right are a few inspectors will come out to sh shortly but first i want you to click and drag over this main area this starts a filter. It means ignore the startup costs. Startup is very important, you want a fast startup, but for us the main problems here are in the actual running of the app. So by doing that we're saying only show us calls that took place during that period we chose. So with that selected, uh, we have a few options here how we can start looking at the code. We can either just start pulling out these things, say what's inside start, what main is, inside main is top level code, yada yada yada, and work our way down to have a look what's used up all the CPU time. So you can see 93% was spent in CF run loop and then 38% in CF run uh, CF run loop do source one and 38% in CF run loop do observers. So not very helpful stuff in here, but there is an easier way of finding useful information, which is these inspectors. If you choose extended detail with main thread, the top thing chosen, it will, I'll make this bigger, it will show you what's called the heaviest stack trace what used up most of the time in my run of this program. And as you can see, it is copy image set block ping, or block set ping, sorry. So loading pictures is having to do all this stuff, drawing images, doing it here, rendering stuff, create image, prepare, commit, all this kind of thing. All the drawing of my pictures is taking up most of the time. Now black code is our code and gray code is Apple's code. But as you might imagine, we can't exactly blame Apple. Hey, your, your drawing code's slow. Their code is very, very good, usually. Um, it can be slow if you call it badly. So, of course, we have to worry about the way we're calling it as well as our own code. Uh, so the heaviest stack trace is the fastest way to see what was literally the, the, the slowest thing in this entire program. And as you can see right now, is drawing pictures is the slowest thing. You might find you have copy image block set Apple JPEG being slower. It depends on whether you spent more time inside the uh, tables you controller or inside the images. I mean, obviously, it depends how you use your test app. We can also look inside here to find stuff, but as I've said, it is quite messy to begin with. You can either hold down Alt and click one of these arrows, which is a, usually a bad idea, but I'll show it to you. Hold down Alt and click, and it unfolds every arrow. So you can see we spent, in this case, 14% of our time calling copy image block set ping here, and then further down there's tons of other calls to do, you know, uh, layer bit image and CS image stuff, and make image down here. There's tons and tons of image code happening. So you could do that, that's usually quite hard. Or you can press invert call tree, which flips the entire thing around. So you can see it's, it's now showing us the other way around. So it starts down here and work your way up at saying, actually, here's all those JPEG calls took up 5% of the time in that particular area. So you can do it that way. Uh, there's more stuff down here, you know, decode JPEG and uh, down here, set Apple JPEG. So there's lots and lots of image calls happening which is using up a lot of CPU time. You can, if you're sure your code is the one that's slow, in our case it is not because there isn't much of our own code, it's all Apple code, um, you can press hide system libraries. This will now show you only your code. So you can see my self row index path call here uh, took up 3.4% time of, of, on the CPU. 
uh, there's more things down here you can pull apart, like, you know, did select row to go 0.1%, you know, nothing, let's face it. Uh, so that is it's telling us immediately what the slow things are. It's the pictures. And that's what Time Profile is very, very good at. Heavier stack trace, then dig through and find what's calling it. So that that is uh, a brief, brief look at Time Profiler. For now, go ahead and close instruments. Then relaunch it, so command I again. It just clears out the previous version. And this time, I'd like you to choose the core animation instrument. We'll have a look at the way the drawing's happening. Press choose for that one, then press record. So this will tell us uh, an FPS count, how many frames per second our app is rendering on the iPhone. And it's saying right now zero, which doesn't mean the thing's frozen, it just means no drawing's happening we aren't scrolling around or doing anything. So when I start scrolling on my iPhone, that will start redrawing. So 56, 59, 59, 60. So pretty good, pretty good. I'll press stop. Ideally, you want 60 uh, because that's what Apple recommends. That's a silky smooth, uh, beautiful, nice, happy thing that most apps try to achieve. If you get lower than that, and if you're running on anything less than iPhone 6, you probably will with this bad project because it is so badly written. Uh, and it's your goal to spot what's drawing slowly and make it faster. Now, you might think, well, how do I know what's drawing slowly? You know, this, it, the code is, is really simple. Why should it be slow? Actually, core animations instruments can help you spot why it's slow. So press record again. It'll launch the app again. Get a new uh, run here, nice and clean. And now have a look at the options along here. It's the middle inspector, which is what the display inspector looks, at, looks like. Uh, and there are the three options we'll look at right now here that can help you really see why things are slow. First is color blended layers. So if I press that, you'll see in my phone, everything goes either green or red. Uh, green means this took no blending to draw, which meant it just got rendered straight as a bitmap onto the screen without having to calculate alpha values and stuff, uh, which is much, much faster than red, which means I had to go through and find transparent bits and, and cut them out and draw it over nicely. That's obviously a bad thing. Uh, so green is good, red is bad in this case. And in fact, the red is uh, translucent. So um, if you uh, have a red thing over a red thing over a red thing, it'll look really, really red. So you can see multiple layers of translucency, translucency building up to be bad. Uh, so yes, broadly speaking, you want things to be non-translucent, i.e. You know, opaque, so they draw much faster. So that's color blended layers. There's also color off-screen rendered yellow. I'll choose that. Uh, color off screen rendered yellow, what it means is some images, some way of drawing requires an extra drawing path, pass, sorry, extra drawing pass. It has to draw off the screen its own memory area fully. Then, then when it's finished with drawing off screen, redraw it on screen. So it does two draws essentially. Uh, this is slower, obviously, as I do twice the work, um, and it's bad, obviously. And finally, uh, let's look at color hits green and misses red. This is doing nothing on my screen, as you can see, and that's okay. Nothing means no problem. Uh, what this means is uh, if you ask for an image to be cached uh, and it gets used from the cache successfully, which is a good thing, it's faster, then you'll see it being shown green. Uh, if you put an image in the cache and then it can't be used from the cache, usually because it's changed, then it gets colored red. You know, you've done all the work to put it in the cache and then not use it, so toss it away and re-put it in the cache again. That's a bad thing. So broadly speaking, you want uh, off-screen redded yellow to be uh, no yellow at all, so or as little yellow as possible. No worries there. You see the navigation bar is yellow because it has to do that nice blur effect stuff. Don't worry about that. That's Apple's code. You can't fix that. You want color hits uh, green and misses red to either be all green or all nothing at all, like my thing right now, so no uh, hits being used whatsoever is fine. Red is obviously bad, and color blended layers ideally should be all green. Uh, it's not a massive problem this one so much anymore, but ideally you should be all green. Anyway, we can now see a little bit about the drawing of this thing being bad, because uh, particularly if you look at the uh, color off screen rendered yellow, it's doing off screen render passes for all those images in our table view, which is very inefficient and will cause very, very slow scrolling on older devices. We can fix that. The, the, the reason this is happening is because of this uh, shadow effect that we've added in. Where is it? Down here, this stuff. Give the images a nice shadow to make them look a bit more dramatic. This stuff is actually very, very slow. 
So CA layer, which we've used just briefly to do things like uh, corner radius and border width and such, has a built-in shadow system. So it can draw a shadow around these things. You can see it uh, in the app. There it is, lovely, well, it's lovely, hideous shadow being drawn dynamically around the image. Uh, and this is all in my CA layer. There's no work from us. We just say add this shadow. But it's very, very slow. And the reason it's slow is because of the way it's drawn. Uh, it has to find out where the transparent areas of the picture are so it can draw the shadow around it. The shadow is wonderful. You can literally apply it to say some text and it will go around every letter in the text adding a shadow effect. It doesn't do it around the frame, a square. It does it around every letter. Or in our case, the picture, it has to go through and find the transparent areas. So that's what it's doing on its off-screen drawing pass. It's going, it's drawing the thing and saying where are the alpha areas, then draw the shadow around it and then put the whole thing back onto the screen. So it's very, very slow. So either you say to your designer, listen, this shadow is terribly slow. Sorry, um, you have to go. This will not work on you know, iPhone 4 or 4S. Um, or you can, in our case, give uh, CA Layer some more information because it has an optimization available for this wonderful shadow system, which makes the whole thing run faster in our case. And that is what's called a shadow path. I can say cell.imageView unwrap.layer dot shadow path. This thing says what shape should the shadow be. So rather than have it scan the image to try and figure out the shape, we can just tell it the shape because so we know they're all the same rectangle. It, the, all these things are 320 by 240 points high. So just go ahead and give it that and it will say, okay, don't even bother calculating it and it'll scroll much, much faster. So if I do uh, shadow path equals, so this thing wants a CG path. And as we've done before, the easiest system to do this is actually use a UI Bezier path and then convert that to a CG path. So we'll say a UI Bezier path and use an initializer, which we haven't done before, uh, with a rect. We can give it a rectangle. So we'll say with the rect, CG rect, then X0, Y0, width 320, height 240, uh, parenthesis, parenthesis, dot CG path. That's all it takes. We're now telling CA layer, we know already what the shadow path should be. Please don't try and recalculate it. So I will uh, quit instruments, then press Command I to launch it again. And this time again, choose the core animation instruments. When it loads, come on, you can do it. Here we go, core animation, choose and record. And this time we'll choose again, color off-screen yellow, and boom. There is now no off-screen drawing happening for those images that can be done in one draw pass. So the scrolling will immediately, immediately in every device get faster, which is just fantastic, which is good. So that's one problem down straight away. So you can get rid of that for now. The color off-screen red yellow is, is dead as far as we're concerned. Let's have a look what else we're doing wrong. Uh, so quit instruments again, get a nice clean run. Then press Command I to rerun it. And this time, let's choose a different kind of instrument. We're going to choose the allocations instrument. It's telling you what is happening behind the scenes for creating and destroying objects. So press choose, then press record. Okay, so there's lots of numbers in this one, that's okay. Just scroll around again, just scroll around up and down the thing, get a good run of this uh, table view, scrolling around. There we go, so I've used it a good few times now. Boom, there we go. And I press stop, that's enough for now. So you can see there's tons of stuff happening here, you know, UI text effect window, CG path sequence, uh, CF basic hash, UI status bar window, all sorts of stuff happening here, most of which is nothing to do with our code. You know, we haven't asked for an NSIS unrestricted, whatever that heck was. We haven't asked for any of this stuff. It's done for us automatically by us calling other uh, Apple APIs, which then calls stuff, which calls stuff, which calls stuff, which calls uh, FBS scene context, whatever. So a lot of this work we don't really know much about or indeed care about. It's its own uh, Apple's code. We care about our code. So what you can do though is filter this. Here in instrument detail, you can just type anything you want to and it will show you uh, only things that match what you typed. So if I type UI, it will now only show things that have UI in their name. And in our case, for Apple that stuff, that means everything that's a user interface thing. And you can literally look through here and see all of the UI classes, plus other stuff like, you know, CUI, BOM data, fine, but ignore that. You can see here UI table view cell, 
UI image view, uh, all these things, your UI images down here. And what you can see, hopefully, in here are these two columns, persistent and transient. Persistent means created and still around. Transient means created and destroyed. And if you look carefully, you should see UI table view cell. There are seven visible, because you can see in the, in the thing, there's probably something recycled. But 72 destroyed, which means it's creating a table view cell 72 times and throwing it away afterwards. It is not reusing the table view cells correctly. This is a bad thing. Uh, you know, in the early days, you simply couldn't get performance table views without reusing cells. Nowadays, not so much, but it's still important because, you know, whenever we create a UI table view cell, we also have to create, you know, UI tap, just to recognizer, UI table view cell, is that content view? Yep. Then UI long press recognizer, UI table view label, uh, there's a UI image view somewhere. There are lots and lots of things being created as a result of I mean, UI label layer, uh, UI just to recognize a target. There's tons of stuff being created thanks to us creating so many table view cells. So you really you want to avoid it. We're wasting a lot of time. There's the image view there. We're wasting a lot of time creating, destroying table view cells, which is a bad thing. So we can have a look at what's going on. We can say uh, cell for index path. And here we are dequeuing a table view cell. Not. See, we're just saying create a new one every single time. This is a very common coding mistake. And in fact, uh, the first few years of uh, iOS at Apple's annual developer conference, they would say again and again and again, you should use uh, reuse identifiers for all your cells. It's just too slow not to. Nowadays, not so slow, but it's still not great. We're doing a lot of extra work every single time, not least, you know, creating the shadow each time, creating new image each time. It's very, very slow. So uh, we can either fix this by uh, dequeuing a cell ourselves, or we can register a class. Now, the reason is we haven't had this problem before is because uh, if you use a storyboard, then uh, you can always dequeue a cell because the storyboard registers the table view cell type for you as a prototype uh, and lets you pull it off automatically so it works really, really nicely. Uh, that's quite modern. The old school way is to do it, create it by hand. So we'd, we'd take this code out of here and say uh, var cell is table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier. I'll call it cell. Then cast it as UI table view cell like that. Exclamation mark because it might be nil, might be none there. If cell is nil, then cell equals UI table view cell, just like before. Uh, style is dot default and identify is cell. Uh, so let's decuse a cell, if it can. If it can't, if it gets one back as nil, it creates one, and it will then get reused. Uh, and that's it, that's what it takes to fix this particular problem. The other solution you could take is to uh, use the register class approach, which is slightly nicer and slightly more modern. You can say up here uh, in view did load, table view dot register class, register class uh, for cell reuse identifier. So we'd say UI table view cell dot self for identifier cell, like that. And with that live uh, code, you will never get nil back here. This will always be a value. So it works more like a storyboard, which is uh, a good thing if you like the storyboard approach. Uh, there are advantages to doing this way. It's not all about being super modern. Doing it this old school way is actually helpful because in this code block here, you know you've got a cell back the first time. You can do any expensive work now. You know, if you want to add um, buttons or background images or whatever, this is a completely new cell. Uh, whereas if you do it the old, the new way, sorry, like this, you will always get a cell back. You won't know if it's new or not. And the other advantage is here, this just creates a table view cell. Whereas down here, you can say, actually, I want to create a subtitle style cell instead. So you can create other kinds of table view cell. Uh, which is much nicer, so you have more flexibility. Uh, I'm going to try and undo this code so it actually runs again, because you, you don't use both, you want to use one or the other if possible. Uh, right, so that is now good code. Yes, good. That has fixed the problem. So dequeuing it with an identifier cell, if it's nil, uh, create one and give it the same identifier and put it back in. So hopefully now if we run the code back, uh, I'll quit instruments again, so we've got a nice clean run. Don't get you getting confused, it's early point in your instruments career. Compile that, and it will run it back. All being well. 
and there's instruments. I'll choose allocations again and press record. I'll just filter on UI table view cell. Boom. So we can see persistent three, transient zero. So you can see I'm only seeing three cells right now. Scroll around. That's it. Boom. So we're now seeing persistent doesn't go above four by the looks of it. That's the most you can see at any one time like that. Uh, other than that, it's just cell reuse. So there are no transient cells. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's, it's taken all the extra work away. So again, the scrolling gets faster. This is a much more efficient way of working with table views. Don't make that mistake. So the question is, why now does it crash when you go in here enough times? So if I look in this thing, you can see I've got uh, uh, his Perseus and uh, here's Pandora. And I keep on doing stuff. Uh, you'll see it really, really struggles. The whole thing gets slower and slower until eventually iPhone 6 has got quite a lot of RAM, <laughs> so it's not too soon. If you've got an iPhone 4, it'd be dead by now, guaranteed. Oh, there you are, Icarus killed it. Um, so it crashed, uh, and that's obviously a bad thing. You don't want things to crash. Um, and there are two answers to this question. Why is it crashing? One is code-related, and one is not. So for the first answer, let's have a look at the images that I supplied to you in this content folder. Uh, in fact, I actually open them in Finder. It's much easier to have a look. So in Project 30, content, here are the pictures. Uh, so here is a picture of Hephaestus. And it is deliberately blurry. This is actually is in one of my shipping apps, a real app called Mythology. Please buy it. Uh, and uh, obviously, I don't want to give away the super high-res version of these pictures. Um, but if you go to the inspector, which is Tools to Inspector, you will see this picture is 6,600 pixels across by 4,100 pixels high. Uh, which is ridiculous. So even the iPhone 6 Plus screen uh, is uh, much, much smaller than that. So that's, that's basically, I think, actually 10 times the pixels of an iPhone 6 Plus screen. Uh, it's obscene. So the designer gave us the pictures he made, but forgot to scale them down. Uh, of course, we were super busy, so we just dropped them in straight away. Uh, and what's happening is this is putting crazy pressure on the memory in the device. It's doing lots and lots of work for what is essentially invisible. The device cannot render this many pixels. It's completely invisible. So ideally, you want to scale them down to a size that works. Um, you know, go for the biggest you want, fine. Uh, iPhone 6 Plus. Um, but nothing, nothing, nothing like this size for sure. But there's something else here. If you look at uh, the image view controller, so I'll go ahead and assume you fix these pictures in your own time to make them the right size. Uh, you'll see it loads a thing in and it sets uh, in viewed load image viewed image equals UI image named image, the one that was passed in. So Hephaestus, Icarus, Midas, whatever. It's using UI image named. Now, UI image named is very, very helpful. Give it a name like Hephaestus here or Hades, and you don't need to specify .ping. You haven't got to give it a, a directory. It will find that image inside your bundle file, your app bundle and load it into the UI image automatically and put it into here. But it will also cache the image. It will keep it around later for, for further usage, which is extremely helpful if you have images in your program which are a decent size uh, and are going to be used again and again and again. Because you can just say, listen, I know it's going to be used, put it into the cache, so that loading it is much, much faster next time. Awesome. Problem is, here we have a very large picture, thus taking up a lot of RAM, and uh, we probably aren't going to want to use it again. These will look at the picture once, go back and look at a different picture. They're not going to want to go back and forward and back and forward and back and forward with the Trojan War picture or the Odysseus picture, no matter how lovely they are. Did I mention the apps on sale? Yeah, great. Um, so we're, we're saying, hey, put it in the cache, and we're never actually using the cache. Now, behind the scenes, the UI image cache is very clever. It will automatically empty itself if there is memory pressure, i.e. if we're running out of RAM or get warnings from the system. But you sh it shouldn't be in there in the first place. We don't need it in there. It doesn't need to be cached ever. So we can replace that with a call to UI image contents of file, which pulls the image from disk and shows it without caching it. But that requires a full file name. So we'll say uh, in this file, let path equals nsbundle.main bundle, oops, main bundle, path for resource, image, and then of type, let's do nil and kill the directory stuff. I keep getting that for some reason. And then replace this UI image call with UI image contents of file path. So that will load it the old old fashioned way without caching attached to it, which is much, much uh, more memory efficient. Uh, it is whinging because it's uh, optional. Go, oh, it's easy, sorry. Let's use that one, boom. Like that, much better. So, 
that loading the images was slow because it was uh, big images. Fine, we looked at and fixed that one. Uh, and it was slow and unhelpful and chewing up RAM because iOS was caching them unnecessarily. Also bad. But there is something else here because image named, which you saw already, um, will clear itself automatically if it needs to. So it, it, if there's a RAM problem, if we're running out of RAM somewhere in the system, it will clear up the RAM. So why does our app still run out of memory? To find out, let's have a look again at instruments. So I'm going to just zap instruments for now again, completely kill it. Nice clean run. Instruments is a lovely app and you can just create more and more windows, but I really don't want you to get confused at this point because you'll get scared of instruments and don't do that. It's a lovely program. Uh, so command I again inside Xcode to launch uh, the application again using instruments. It will build it and load instruments again. All being well. There we go. Choose allocations again and press choose. Then run. So we're going to go uh, and just tap into the detail view a few times. Uh, so here's the one for Hades and Persephone. Here's the one for Hephaestus. Here is the one for Heracles. Then Icarus. Then Midas. And then Theseus. Yep, and then Odysseus. Boom. That's enough time now. You've got an idea of what it's doing. Oh, it's really struggling now, that's for sure. Anyway, so that has tested the app out fairly well. It has completely bailed on me now. This app is a really, really terrible app. Don't make this app, please. Um, so we now have a, an example of us using the application like a user would do, more or less. If you look inside the instrument detail here and search for our uh, selection view controller or image view controller, we can have a look. We'll look at, say, image view controller. That's the thing showing the, the, uh, the pictures. And we can see uh, what's happening here. It, it's... Uh, creating these things, but none are transient. So it's got seven pictures being loaded, seven of these image view controllers, and they're all persistent. None are transient. Now, remember, a transient thing means something that's, that's created and then gets thrown away. And in that navigation controller, I'm panning into the, the picture and press the back button. I expect it to be destroyed at that point. So why is it not being destroyed? What's happening is it's keeping the image view controllers around all the time, uh, along with all the RAM they use, which is of course very, very dangerous because they have very large pictures right now. Now, of course, if you've already fixed the pictures, they'll be a lot smaller. This won't crash uh, quite so quickly, but it will crash eventually because they are persistent. They never go away. You never free up the RAM. It just gets worse and worse and worse. So let's have a look at the code. If you look in selection view controller, there are a few things in here that are designed to be red herrings um, because uh, you know, hopefully by this point you have, you have some good swift coding skills behind you. Uh, you may start to spot some interesting things and try and fix them, but you might be wrong. So if you look inside did select row index path, you'll see a very fishy line here. Add to our view controller cache and show. Wait a minute, what's a view controller cache? Why do you want a view controller cache? Now, if you are desperately recycling view controllers, which you have a very particular use case, and it almost certainly is not into the navigation controller. Uh, and in our case, it's just showing an image view. There's nothing really to cache here. So putting it into the cache means it's going into an array forever and ever and ever. That must be the problem. Delete that. Zap it. In fact, that whole cache is pointless. Get rid of it. Yeah, for fast loading, the cache is never actually used. Stupid. Zap it. Uh, you can delete that, and it still runs because the cache was never being read. It's being added and added and added. Uh, so let's run that back. And again, when it finishes copying and running, I'll press uh, profile. Uh, important tip for you, actually, when you're making profiling changes, it is a good idea. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. It's the only idea, be sane, to make one change at a time. Uh, so you change a thing, retest, change a thing, retest, change a thing, retest. So you can be sure your changes are happening. Uh, there's my old instruments window, so I didn't quit by accident, there we go. So the new one, again, allocations. Brilliant, press record. Select Hades, select Hephaestus, select Heracles, and let's see if that's any better. So I'll look for, uh, was it image view controller? Nope, 
Persistent three, transient zero. That was not the problem. That is red herring number one. Press stop. So that didn't fix the problem. Um, so it wasn't the uh, random array of cache view controller, I think. You may also notice uh, that inside image view controller, there is a property var owner is selection view controller. And that's got a use. It's a lame use, but it's a use. If you look, the uh, selection view controller has a, a var dirty equals false line. That means uh, don't bother refreshing the, the table view. And when it appears here, and view will appear, if dirty is true, we marked as the counter reload, i.e. change those numbers as someone's tapped the picture, we should reload the data. Only if dirty is true. And then inside uh, did select row index path here, we make dirty false for sure, and then set the view controller's owner to be us. And finally, inside image view controller, uh, when we tap on stuff, we say owner dirty true. So it knows when you go back to show the listing again, reload the table so you can see what number has changed correctly. So dirty has got a use. Um, it's, it's not particularly amazing use, but it's definitely a use. And you might be thinking, oh, wait a minute. Selection view controller is creating image view controller, and image view controller has got a reference back to selection view controller. We've got ourselves a strong reference cycle. At least I hope that's what you're thinking. If you follow the course correctly, I have tried to go on and on and on about these things because they are very dangerous. Uh, so this this might be a problem. Uh, so your fix would be to say, well, actually, the, the image view controller doesn't need a strong reference to the selection view controller. A weak one's perfectly fine. So I can put in here, weak var owner. Yeah, I am totally elite. I will quit instruments. I'm going to love this. I'm going to say, don't save that run. It's perfectly fine. Don't save. And then, yeah, I'm going to instrument that again. Command I. Check me out. Let's find out. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Copying libraries, running on jewels. Again, wait for instruments to load and choose the allocations instrument. Then press record. Watch it run. Uh, tap on Hades. Tap on Hephaestus. Tap on Heracles. And let's have a look if that's fixed our problem. Spoiler, it hasn't. Image view controller. Oh no, persistent three, transient zero. What the heck is going on? Why? Why will this not go away? Press stop. You can look at it. This code is perfectly innocent. Nothing interesting is happening here. You know, the animation, that's got a lovely unowned self in there. It's totally unowned. There's no strong reference cycles there. Uh, this code looks perfectly fine. But there is a problem still. And the problem is one that you would have been able to spot if you were lucky and good uh, at the old language, Objective-C. And the problem is this line of code here. It uses a timer to do animation, and the animation is tedious. You know, it makes the image uh, appear and then scale out. Where is the animation? Here it is. Just scale it out. Uh, it's very, very tedious. So it just fades in at first, then scales down, and scales down, scales down. It's a very boring animation. But that actually causes our problem. If I select schedule timer with time interval and open up this pane on the right and go to the manual, this uh, is a brilliant piece of documentation if you're using Objective-C. If you're not, this is a very unhelpful piece of documentation because it doesn't tell you the important stuff here. And I'll try and show you, I think I can show you to the Apple site just briefly. So I'll launch uh, here and then go to NS Timer. Uh, choose that thing. I'm using uh, this one here, boom. Uh, now, if you look, these are slightly different. So we have seconds target, a select the user info repeats. Uh, so it's telling you how many seconds between time firings of the timer. And here, the object is send message to, specified by a select when the timer fires, just like in here. But it adds an extra sentence here. So the same thing, da -da 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 -da, when timer fires, but the timer maintains a strong reference to its target until the timer is invalidated. This is obviously a bug. Don't worry, I have mentioned this to Apple. Maybe it's fixed by the time you look at this video. I hope so, because this is quite an annoying little glitch. Uh, this thing on the right does have that same sentence in if you're coding in Objective-C, but not in Swift for some reason. Uh, this is a problem because what's happening here is this is being set to a property. I've made it quite clear for you in the code. Make ourselves anim timer hold a strong reference to this equal to NS timer 
with a target of self. And that is your strong retain cycle. That's what's causing the problem. The view controller owns the anim timer. The anim timer owns self. Because repeat to set the true, it never stops. The timer keeps on ticking again and again and again, every few seconds, like that. Constantly ticking, well, every five seconds perhaps, so it's you know very, very slow. Three, four, five, and again. Um, but it's constantly ticking away, so it always has a strong reference cycle, uh, including the view controller, which is bad. The fix for this is really, really simple. Uh, we have down here, view did appear. We're gonna add a new method called view will disappear. I don't think we've got one of these already. No, we haven't. Nope, let's make sure I don't want to duplicate the method. Nope. So we've got view did appear. We're going to have uh, view will disappear. So the view is going to go away, i.e. the user is leaving the view to return to the original table view. We'll pass it on to super by saying super view will disappear, animated, like that. And then we'll just say self.animTimer.invalidate. Again, I'm putting this in here so you can see exactly what's happening. You don't need the self, but I'm making it really, really clear to you here. Uh, this thing owns the anim timer. Anim timer owns the view. So now I will quit instruments again one last time. Then press Command I. Run it back. Build and run. Hopefully, there we go. Wait for instruments launch and choose allocations one last time. Choose. Press record, choose Hades, go back, choose Hephaestus, go back, choose Heracles, go back, uh, choose Icarus, go back, goes around, choose Trojan Horse, go back, choose Pandora, go back, and let's have a look now. So it's called Image View Controller. It doesn't even appear anymore, fantastic, they've all gone. <laughs> it literally has deleted. Uh, so I press back out, it destroys it straight away and gets rid of it entirely because they are all now correctly transient. The only persistent one is the one currently being shown on the screen. That has fixed the problem. As you can see, I've, I've gone out of various screens now and this thing's no longer, longer crashing, even though I am loading some very, very huge pictures in there, which is a bad thing. Um, but I'm not caching them more with UI image named. I'm just using uh, plain contents of files. So it's, it's still quite slow, but it's not memory intensive as it, like it was before. This is a huge improvement. Obviously, you still want to get those pictures down to a normal size because they're so very big right now. It really does work your iPhone far too hard. But it's a much better program, much more solid, and we've fixed many, many common iOS problems and found them, of course, using instruments. For more information, see the website, hackingwithswift.com, where you can buy this video and all the videos in this series at high resolution. Or download them as ebooks. They look fantastic and they contain lots more technical, hands on information to help you out. Alternatively, find me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. If you have problems, questions, suggestions, who knows what, get in touch, follow me there. I would love to hear from you. And finally, this ends Hacking with Swift. Uh, this is the last project. I hope, I dearly hope. This has been very, very useful to you. It's been a lot of work to make, all these videos and all these books and stuff, um, but I do hope it's made a difference to you, that you've learned a lot, that you've made a lot, that you've hacked a lot, and you've had some fun. Have just a great time coding. I wish you the very best. If you make stuff, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you, um, and I may even buy your apps and leave you a nice review. Best of luck. Take care.